Okay, here we are. We have made it to the uh, McLaren special booth, the VIP section. So cool they're putting on. And they have over here the brand new, the all new Solus GT Hypercar. And check this out special meal <laughs> for all the McLaren clientele, the VIP room, I guess you can say. This is so cool what they're doing over here. So let's grab some, something to eat real quick and then uh, check out more of the special locations out here today for Car Week. Cool behind the scenes action. Definitely got to say they know how to put on a, a good showing. The one big thing I've noticed about coming out here is that I am very underdressed all the time. I mean like my hat game is totally, totally bad. The people out here prefer the, the, the finer things in life, right? Like fur coats. This is a Lamborghini house. Where's your Lambo jacket, Kurt? In the car. Check out this house right here. I can't imagine how many millions this must be worth. Couture de Lumière. Couture de Lumière. And here we have the all new Urus Performante locked behind the Lamborghini wall. Uh, behind the Italian flag. Pretty cool seeing this. I must have missed it at the coil. So this is a part of the golf course where you see tons of classic cars with different classes exactly. I guess you can say so they're their class. Uh, and they're auctioning vehicles off and also giving awards, I think. <laughs> and check out this house right behind me. Look at this place. That is huge. I can't imagine how much money is here right now. Okay, and here we have where they are doing the auctions over here. Full coastal view of this bay. I remember standing here just one year ago checking this place out. My third year here and look how big this event actually is. You have Aston Martin here, all the big brands. And here we have the all-new Lincoln Model L100 that was uh, recently just debuted. Uh, please let me know what do you think about this finish, seeing these side walls of the vehicle slide open and that roof panel, obviously concept, right? Um, but <laughs> very, very crazy seeing how bold and outlandish they are willing to go. Looking at this concept, obviously, I guess the idea is that self-driving car of the, the future, right? Where when you get inside, you just sit there and uh, no steering wheel, nothing like that. Um, I don't know, the thought of uh, the future going down this route kind, kind of uh, freaks me out. But please let me know your thoughts on this entire setup. The doors are closing right now, roof just shut. <laughs> yeah, that has got some style. And check this out, one of my favorite vehicles here on display right now, the new Zinger 21C. What do you think of the finish? of these uh, hypercars right in front of me. I love it because looking at it, you notice how the cabin is just you in the center like a McLaren F1. However, they don't just leave it like that and give you all sorts of cabin room to fit two extra people on either side of you. No, 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 no. it's not about that. It's about keeping like a fighter jet style and lowering that central location where the cabin would be and trying to maximize airflow throughout the vehicle. So that is why when you look up online, they say the team that, that designed this vehicle it was inspired by the SR-71 and other aircrafts. I think overall the design of the aerodynamics of this vehicle, I think it's got to be one of my favorite, absolute favorite track focused uh, hypercars out there. Those intakes are massive. You have that, that swan neck style spoiler, similar to the Senna and other vehicles on the market, which I believe it could, could be active. From last I heard, Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2Rs, similar to uh, all the other hypercars coming out, the stickiest street legal tires you can possibly buy. Though that splitter, uh, yeah, I would not dare drive this. Not only do they look absolutely crazy, they also beat uh, the, the Senna's lap time around Laguna Seca Raceway. So I believe this clocked a, a 125 or a high 124 on Laguna Seca Raceway, which is a new um, record out there for a vehicle like this. With the downforce, it makes over 2,000 
thousand pounds of downforce. I think it was 2,400, 2,500 for the peak downforce, which is crazy. Look at that front splitter with those dive planes on either side. Gotta be very careful driving this thing um, on a uh, surface that has any dips whatsoever. I can't imagine taking this down the corkscrew and having it slam the front splitter down onto the ground because I think it would definitely do that. But with the contact patch, the aerodynamic design, and having over a thousand horsepower, peak output is 1300. You have a 2.9 uh, liter twin turbocharged V8 that produces 950 horsepower and that revs to over 10,000 RPM, 10,500 RPM. Then when you throw in all the electric motors for the all-wheel drive system, it boosts that power up to 1,300 horsepower. Recently I saw the Aston Martin Valkyrie uh, doing hot laps at Laguna Seca Raceway. And seeing this in person, I think those two look very, very crazy in comparison to each other. Let, let me know what do you think in the comment section down below. Though the addition they get, in my opinion, has to be the blue one to the right, the more track-focused variant, because in comparison, all that aero will really make this car shine and take into the next level. Lap times is basically all about the downforce you're putting down and managing it. And that's what I've learned, especially with all these new performance cars coming out and putting down lap times. And now the doors are completely open. What do you think of this style of a door? Absolutely insane. I can't imagine opening up in the garage. That probably wouldn't work out too well. You'll probably have your own like airport hangar for this thing or a special one-off like warehouse garage. Over here we have the Maserati MC20 uh, Cielo Edition. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It looks pretty cool being a convertible. Um, testing this car out at um, Bula Springs Raceway, to on, on the street and seeing how it drives. It's a fun vehicle, it sounds really good, and it's properly engineered and put together. I'm a big fan, and I think they're offering some of the coolest paint colors in automotive history, essentially. Check it out. It's like a gray, but now it's turning into a light blue. It's insane how they're doing this. Hopefully the camera is picking everything up but having the roof come off or come down is gonna take this experience to the next level. I know the turbos sound really cool when you accelerate and then you let off, um, but <laughs> this will add weight versus the coupe counterpart. The good thing is, since you have a carbon fiber tub in the middle, the chassis rigidity, um, it will still be way superior than the aluminum constructions that you see on a lot of other mid-engine supercars. A few things I would like them to uh, improve upon in the near future or, and see is put on more aggressive um, R compound tires as like, an option. I know these Bridgestones do a good job putting down the power, but it'd be cool to see them bring out a much more uh, track focused or just a uh, raw variant of the MC20. I think they're on the right path. This is such an insane vehicle um, and, and driving it. And if you haven't seen our review, make sure to check it out because you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I have a lot of friends who are picking them up as well and I see why. And on the market, there's nothing else that is uh, similar to this in terms of its style. This has got a carbon tub unlike the majority of Lamborghinis out there and Ferraris. Just uh, McLaren is the only one that can be sold within this price tier that has a carbon fiber tub. Epic Porsche 918 right in front of us. This thing looks crazy, especially with the top exit exhaust out back. Look how low that is. Oh gosh. Anyways, please let me know in the comment section down below what are your thoughts on the Zinger GT and the question of the day whether what makes a track car almighty is the downforce and the weight. Could this formula being applied on future cars really take them to the next level? Because they're getting pretty equalized now having Cup 2Rs. We're seeing Cup 2Rs in all sorts of cars like the new GT3 RS, the uh, Z06 Corvette, Hypercars, you name it. The one similarity is the tires, so I think that's going to equalize a lot of these vehicles. The next up on the list is going to be weight. Will the Z06 have an issue competing with a lot of cars that weigh less? I don't know, but we're going to find out. Same goes for the GT3 RS. That car was raised around 3,200 pounds, which is pretty good. The weight caliber for the Z06, I believe, is around 3434 dry. Uh, will that be 3,600 curb weight? I don't know yet. We're going to find out. 
and regarding the comparison between the Zinger and the Aston Martin Valkyrie. I'm really looking forward to hearing what you think in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching this video if you liked it. Make sure to hit that like button for us to help me out and subscribe for much more great content coming out your way. I'll see all of you in the next episode.